Today, I'm gonna to take this footage of me against a closet wall and replace it with this background using DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Photoshop Generative AI. Okay, so I have a color graded clip here in DaVinci Resolve. So basically all I did was I just applied a LUT to it. And this is the uh, the Lexa Phantom LUT. And I filmed this on the Sony a7 IV in S-Log3. Okay, so I have my clips here imported into DaVinci Resolve. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag and drop this down onto the timeline. And just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm only gonna do just a small clip of it. Okay, so we're gonna come down to the color tab here. Click on that. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to select our magic mask tool here. And then we're gonna switch it to better. And then we are going to make sure that that little thing is selected. Okay, so now it's select a part of me where we can see my hands really well. So sometimes in DaVinci, people don't like to make these outlines fairly detailed. I generally do. Um, just to give the computer some more information to go off of. So let's just go around my head, get my hair here. And we'll go on down the side here, and then we'll go up and over and get the hands. And then come back around and get the other side. Okay, so now let's come back down to our window here. Let's go ahead and toggle mask overlay. So let's go ahead and track that information. So to do that, I'm gonna come down here and select this forwards and backwards. So I'll track all the information in this clip. All right, so we'll just right click anywhere in here and hit add alpha output. And then I'm gonna take my mouse, click where that little blue square is, and then we'll just drag that down to this blue dot here. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off the overlay and then I am masked out. Okay, so I'll go ahead and set the uh, in to out ratio. We'll go ahead and set this to negative 43. Okay, I'm gonna turn the clean black up to 1.5. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just take a look and see what that looks like once we put the background in. Again, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect per se to fool the eye. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and tab back over to our timeline here. And let's go ahead and duplicate this clip. Okay, so to do that, I'm just gonna hold down the Option key or the Start key if you're on a Windows. Okay, so let's go back over to our Node Tree window, and we're just gonna reset the Node Grade. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select a frame where I don't have a ton of hands going on here. And what I'm gonna do is just right-click here. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is right-click on this image, hit Grab Still. So come up here, and then we're gonna do an Export. Let's go ahead and do a, uh, a TIFF file here. Go ahead and export that. We'll just call that background. So we're gonna use some AI stuff here in Photoshop now. So I'm gonna come down here and we'll just hit select subject. And then you can see here it's just drawn. A, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect here we want to make sure to get the lighting in the background that we're gonna to generate to match me. And we also want the focal length to match as well. We don't want the background to appear too, too big or too crazy. We don't want the background to look like it was filmed on like an ultra wide fisheye lens, for example, when clearly here I was filmed on like, at like about 60 millimeters full frame. So we wanna make sure that our background matches the focal length pretty well. And I found a little gimmick here to do that. So this is kind of a strange way I'm about to show you. So you're probably gonna be wondering like, what the heck are you doing? Just trust me, it's, it's gonna work out in the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command T on my keyboard. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shrink myself down literally to a borrower size person down here. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to select and then I'm gonna hit inverse. Okay, so now here's where the generative fill comes in. So we'll come down to generative fill. So what we're gonna do here, so the prompt here is key. There's two things you wanna keep in mind. You wanna make sure that your background kind of matches the color of the background here. So this is generally like a white color. You can see that the key light on my face is on the left side here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, um, we'll just say something like large. And, you can, and again, you can make this whatever you want large living room space with white walls. I'll just say natural 
light light is coming from the left side of the frame and then we'll go ahead and hit generate okay so after tweaking around a bit this is basically the image that i came up with and again there's plenty of tutorials out there that show you how to use the generative fill i'm not going to dive too deep into it but for the most part i'm pretty happy with this look i think it looks pretty good it has some nice uh, gobo lighting coming in from the window it's got some nice balance and texture to it um, nice lighting in the middle there i think that this up here will create a good leading line going down to to my eyes here and so again you can even put all these things in the prompt you could say hey create like leading lines with the light to you know draw attention into the center of the frame you can write whatever you want to in that background again it might take you a little bit of time to tweak it and just to get it to be just right for the way you want it now you'll notice down here you'll see that there's just kind of like this weird blob of whatever um, don't worry about that right now and um yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. It looks like they went with a, a deeper focal length. This isn't a super wide focal length here. So again, um, so again, what this does here is if you just make yourself really small down here, for whatever reason, AI Generative Fill still thinks it's pretty really big and just natural. It kind of fools it in a way. And so it still makes the lighting look just fine as if you were like there was a big person here. And it even makes the focal length for the most part look pretty similar to what the image would be as if, you know, it was just like a big version of myself right here. Okay, so I have it in DaVinci here, so I'm just going to go ahead and bring this down. Okay, so right off the back, this looks super fake to me. Okay, so we're gonna tweak this a little bit to make things blend in a little bit more. Okay, so let's go back over to our color tab here. Okay, so let's make sure that this uh, generative AI image is selected here. And let's go over to our library window. And then we'll go up to the magnifying glass here. And let's just search for blur. And so let's do lens blur. Okay. Now this is already looking a lot better to me. So again, I'm just going to tweak some of the settings here. So we'll just tweak the blur size. We can make it really blurry if we want to. That already looks fake to me. So we just, just got to find a good threshold here. You don't want it to, to be too blurry. Okay. So there's the final image. Is that convincing to you? Let me know down in the comments.